Hello everyone and welcome. In today's tutorial, we're going to be creating an autumn color inspired image. We'll be taking this photo, my original photo here, a nice average green tree photo, and we're going to be using split toning to create this photo. So let's hop in here and get started. Okay, let's first let's grab our image and open it into the develop module. Okay, once it's uh, imported into the develop module, let's go down and turn our lens correction zone. Turn on remove chromatic aberration and let's go over to the profile and enable profile corrections. Now if your lens doesn't come up automatically, choose normally the make of it and the rest are normally imported in. If it doesn't, then you have the model and profile you can choose from at the bottom. Okay, my lens I used for this one was the Canon EFS 10 to 22 millimeter. Okay, so once that's done, let's go back up to the top here. Now, white balance we're going to leave as shot because the white balance does look the way we want it to. And we're going to be doing a lot of split toning anyway and changing a lot of the way the photo uh, color appears regardless of the white balance. Okay, but now let's go down here. I want to do my split toning first. And maybe asking why I do split toning first on this particular image. Well, this is because if we do any kind of split toning and add color and stuff, when we go up to the top to re uh, adjust the way the image looks, we'll end up having to double work. So you, to get a better idea of how we want the image to go, we're going to do our split toning first. I hope this makes sense. Okay. So let's first add our little hues and uh, to our highlights and saturation here. Now we're going to be using some uh, tones that you normally would associate with uh, fall. Let's do golds and rusty reds and stuff. So the first one here, I'm going to pull the uh, hue over to about 57. Now let's first drag our saturation over and we'll get a better idea of what we're going for here. Okay. About 58 is close enough. You can see that's a dirty, rusty uh, yellow. Okay. Now let's go down here and let's bring our hue over on the shadows. I want to go over to about 22 here, which would be pretty close to a red. Again, let's bring our saturations up and you get a much better idea. You can see it's a very rusty reddish orange. Okay, that's wonderful. Okay. But now uh, let's adjust our saturation on both our you know highlights and shadows for a split toning now I'm gonna keep the top one here to about 86 and I'm gonna drop the saturation on the shadows the bottom one here to about 56 okay now you'll notice we have balance here the balance helps uh, determine where you basically your color of your split toning will be introduced between the highlights and the shadows no, right now it's at about midways at the zero but if we break it up to plus 100 you can see the highlights take over the biggest brightness of it and if we drop it all the way to negative 100 as you can tell the uh, shadow color is brought up the most now I want this in kind of a little more red than gold so I'm going to break mine to about a negative 45 to 48 that right there works good and this is starting to put our image about where we want it to go Okay, now let's move up to hue, saturation, and luminescence. Now let's click on saturation if you don't already have that cl clicked. Now, with this particular image here, I want to remove the green that's used in the photo. And this is uh, reason I'm doing this is because I'm replacing it with the uh, hues we're using in the split toning. So let's drop the green here to negative 100. Okay. Now let's also drop our yellows. Now we introduced a lot of yellows ourselves, but I want to remove the ones that are in the photos because they also still affect a lot of the green that's in the photo. But we're not going to drop them completely. We're just going to bring them down to a negative 40. But a negative 41 is close enough. And our image is starting to get the uh, color effect we want. Now I'm going to go over here and bump my greens up just a little bit on the luminance just to kind of make the uh, leaves appear a little bit brighter, a little bit more shinier. I'll bring that up to about a plus 30, plus 31. 
looks pretty good here. Now to brighten that upper canopy up a little bit more for us. Okay, let's move all the way back up to our top and do our basic edits. Okay. Now I am going to adjust our contrast just a little bit here, about a plus four on this. I'm about plus five is close enough. Just a little bit of hint more contrast. Okay. Now we've got our highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Now I'm going to drop this down to about negative 50 on here. About negative 53 works good. Now we're going to bring our shadows up to about a plus 26. About a plus 27 was close enough. Okay, now we're going to bring our whites up just a little bit. So about a plus 16, plus 15 is pretty close. And drop our blacks down to about a nine, uh, negative 37. That's negative 39 is close enough. And that's starting to give our image the look that we're going for. Okay. Now let's adjust our clarity, vibrance, and saturation. Okay. Now this particular one, I am going to bring up the clarity really high. And this is for the micro contrast. And it's really going to bring out a lot of those leaves and stuff in the image. I think I'm going to go up to about plus 89. Okay. Now I'm going to bring my vibrance up to about plus 45 here. About plus 44 is close enough. But now I'm going to drop the saturation down to a negative 37. I'm going to negative 38 is close enough. And our image is starting to look pretty good here. Okay. Let's see what else we got to do here. Okay, this looks pretty decent. Well, now let's go down here and do a little bit of sharpening and noise reduction. Now, the sharpening will bring up quite high here to plus 70 to make things really sharp. I am, however, going to adjust the masking out quite a bit. So we can hit our Alt key, bring it over. And about a plus 100 or 100, it's about where we want it. Again, that is to kind of remove a lot of the things that don't need sharpening. So we want sharpening off the trees as much as possible, more than the leaves. This is a very bu busy image, so it's about as good as we're going to get. Okay, since our ISO is only about 100, we're about a 11 or 12 on the luminance is all we really need to remove any kind of noise out and for the color here we'll keep it about 25 okay now let's go down to our post crop vignetting okay on our post crop vignetting here we'll keep this one fairly simple for this image we are going to drop it down to about negative 31 to 32 and that gives us a good, nice uh, image to look through. Makes the image very dark. And that's kind of the look we're going for here. Okay. And plus, that also takes care of any uh, burning that we need to do, any darkening around the image to give the image, you know, some real good uh, visual depth to it. Once that's done, we're actually going to do a little bit of dodging. Okay. Now we'll go here and we'll find dodge. Which is also lightened. Now for this one, I recommend dropping the flow down to about a 33. Density about 75. Of course, I keep my feather at 100. And the exposure, I'm going to bring it up to about 2 here. Of course, we can adjust that after we get done. What I want to do is I want the center area through the image here to have a, a path. But be kind of bright. It's going to lighten the path up a little bit here. This will help give the eyes something to focus in through. Now, instead of driving going up and down, I'm actually going to go side to side on this. Going side to side is really a good way to help the path look really di uh, nice and not look streaks. And that worked out really well. Okay. Now we're going to use one more brush. And this one's clearly optional, although I 
I like the effect that it gives. Let's drop our saturation down to 100 and click on our color. And let's bring it up over here to the red. Now, we click on that. And that'll work pretty good right there. Okay. Now, all we're going we're gonna to do here is just click up in the canopy to add little red spots. This is kind of simulate red leaves. Now, I'm going to keep this kind of small, and you kind of want to keep it off the tree limbs itself, and kind of just in the area where the, the leaves are. We may have to bring our flow up to about 75 on this one to really get a good strong effect. Make sure our exposure is turned down. If you need to darken in any anymore, you can. You can adjust the exposure down to make negative one. Really, those leaves a dark look. And what I'm doing is just finding random spots and just double clicking. And I think that looks pretty decent. And that's it. And I am done. And that's how I created this image. It's a simple little edit. Now there's plenty of ways to create your own autumn images. This is the particular one I used for this one. And it doesn't actually give a pure representation of what, you know, nice true leaves and stuff would look like. But it gives, uh, it takes a green image and gives it a little bit of autumn, you know, fall look to it. And I kind of like it. So I thought I'd share this with everyone. And if you like this video and this tutorial and you find it helpful, how about a, a thumbs up? Thumbs up is always highly appreciated. And if you're not a subscriber to my channel, be sure to subscribe. Subscribing is free. It's for you and lets you know when I release more videos. And until next time, everyone, thank you for watching.